Welcome compadres. Today we're talking structural engineering. We're going to cover one of the more fundamental load cases encountered in structural engineering, the combined torsion and shear case. I see it all the time and if you can understand from going to find these section forces to converting them to stresses and then comparing them to a shear allowable, you're well on your way to becoming a rock star not only in structural engineering but engineering in general. So guys, let's get to it. The most common examples you encounter in structural engineering is combined shear and torsion. I mean, if you understand this, this is kind of the building block to understanding welds, how to calculate internal forces on welds and whether they are fell or not. Also fasteners. Um, so if you can do this, man, you are setting the stage to really know what you're doing in structural engineering. And we're going to use this simple example because I think it's brings home a point that will stick with you and you'll come to realize that it's not that difficult. So for this presentation or this demonstration the objective is to find a resultant shear at an arbitrary location and a lot of times you can look at a problem and say okay the worst case is going to be here but sometimes the geometry is of a nature that you won't be able to do that so you need to be able to calculate a resultant shear at an arbitrary location which I'm going to demonstrate later on. Also we're going to work through and look at the torsion and shear formulas. There are two different formulas not that hard to memorize. Also yeah boy we hit in the free body diagrams like like nothing else I'm telling you this is where it's at you understand the free body diagram you're going to be a phenom in structural engineering and next we're going to compare the resultant shear to a shear allowable and I'm going to show you how to calculate that when you don't know the yield shear stress of the material and lastly we're going to calculate a margin of safety um, it's you just have to do it uh, we can't cover all the bases in engineering there are some things that are not ideal so we apply a margin of safety to basically cover our, our backs so the first step you want to do when you do a combined torsion and shear example is uh, like anything else determine your action forces draw a free body diagram in this case we have a kid on this rocker say it weighs 30 pounds and we have a reaction force at the base in the y direction so you know obvious enough you want to determine your reaction forces using the equations of equilibrium in this case we're calculating the uh, uh, force in the y direction the sum of forces in the y direction and the result is simple it's 30 pounds and it's going up so after you've determined that you make a cut you cut through and, and determine the internal forces and uh, if we look at this in detail, you make a cut, you're really going to have three internal forces. You're going to have uh, one going in the X direction, one shear force going in the Y direction, and a moment um, going around here, as you can see. And we don't include the uh, X direction here because it's painfully obvious that if you sum the forces in the X direction, it's going to be zero. So we, I've, I've not included that in this example, but just realize that's what's going on behind the scenes so after you make a cut at the location of interest now you want to go back and you want to look at your dimensions you want to in this case we're going to assume this spring is six inches wide from end to end and we're going to assume the coil here is one inch in diameter so uh, yeah you know what's coming next your free body diagrams are coming back up they ain't gonna get you ain't gonna get rid of those you gotta do it twice you gotta do it twice remember that if you ain't doing it twice you ain't a structural engineer that's for sure so um, there's our reaction forces let's determine it so our sum of forces in the y direction we can determine our shear force in the y direction which is equal to 30 simple enough and it's pointing down now we take our sum of moments about the cut location in this case our cut location is going to be the middle of this coil and we just sum our moments and uh, if you look at this this we're assuming this is happening at three inches from the edge and since we're calculating the moment in the middle of the spring we got to subtract the radius and so that's where I got two and a half inches so the moment due to this kid on sitting on this horse this rocker this playground equipment whatever you want to call it is 75 pound inches going counterclockwise 
The next step you want to do after you determine your action forces is you actually want to zoom in on this thing. And, and, and we're zooming in on the coil. So if you didn't see that, we're zooming in on this one inch coil. And if you look at our reaction forces, you can tell if you draw a stress element on the inside, that's going to be where our worst case is. The shear stress due to this moment is going to be pointing down, and the shear stress due to this shear force is going to be pointing down right here. So they add up together, that's going to be our worst case. But once again, I want you to realize that you have more power to this. Uh, you can determine shear stress at an arbitrary location. In this case, we're going to look at this stress element over here. I want you to determine the resultant shear stress at this location at 60 degrees from this horizontal right here that's not drawn but you understand what I mean. So you have this torsion is producing a shear stress that is going to be perpendicular to this vector, this uh, distance vector and that's always the case. The moments always do that and uh, your shear stress is going to be remain pointing down due to the shear force so how would you do this? Well, there's a, really an easy w way to do this. In this example, the best way to break down your torsion shear stress into x and y components is to use the geometry of the figure. We're going to calculate our x distance to the stress element and then our y distance downward. So if we look at this for the torsion example, our x distance to the stress element is going to be the radius times the cosine of 60 degrees as you can see by this triangle. You've done this in Algebra 1. Pretty self-explanatory. There's your distance in the x direction. Your distance in the y direction to the stress element is going to be the sine of 60. Uh, so if you remember SOHCAHTOA, you can do that. I know you can, but that's your distance. And then for torsion no stress you have to calculate a polar moment of inertia and that's actually going to be a function of the geometry of what you're looking at. It always won't be this clean but there's some reference books you can look at for different shapes and so now we can calculate our shear stress in the x direction okay it's simply going to be your moment times the y distance to the element over your polar moment of inertia and if you remember this moment is going to always act perpendicular to the uh, distance vector. So in this case, if we point down in the y direction, our shear stress is going to be going in the x direction. For the x vector distance, it's going to be going in the y direction. So I hope that makes sense. That's why we use y, this distance right here, to calculate our x component of our shear stress. Uh, and then similarly for the y component, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to use the x distance. And that's a really easy way to calculate the components of your torsional stress. And that's going to be 191 psi pointing up. So you have your x and y components. The next thing you want to do for the combined shear and torsion example is calculate your, your stress due to the shear force. And so that's pretty simple. Uh, it's just going to be force over area. In this case, it's going to be your shear force 30 over the area. Self-explanatory, uh, you can do this in your sleep. I know you can. Um, and that's, that's simple enough. So that is going to be pointing down. So now here comes the next step. You got to calculate a resultant shear. And it's simply just going to be the sum of your x and y components and you take the square root of it. You know, it's it's really simple. This is the fundamental equation right here. The square or taking the square of your y components, the addition of them, and then adding the square of your x components. So in this case, we're taking our torsion in the y direction, our shear in the in the uh, downward direction and then our torsion in the x direction and you'll see it carried out here uh, so this is what it would look like 191 minus 38 psi squared plus 331 squared and that is your resultant shear 365 psi simple enough so what do you do next why why do you want to determine the uh, shear stress. Well, now you can compare it to a shear allowable and to make sure or to ensure that your design is built well enough to handle the loads. To calculate a shear allowable, a lot of times you're not going to have um, the shear allowable on file, so you can use this correlation from Mamisi stress, 
which simply states that the shear allowable is going to be 0.577 times the yield stress of the material. That is a very important equation in structural engineering. You've got to know that by heart. That is very important. And because this is a just a shear case, it's this is going to be the result. If you had, uh, say, a, a, a tension and compressive stress, this is not valid. This just can be derived from von Mises stress, which I may cover in a later video. But let's say the shear stress, or I'm sorry, the yield stress of this material is 35,000 psi. Um, then your shear allowable is just going to be that uh, the product of those two numbers, which is 20,195 psi. But you can't stop there. Um, you have to calculate a margin of safety. They're going to want to see this. Your margin of safety is another fundamental equation you want to understand or want to know by heart. It's simply going to be your allowable divided by a factor of safety times the load that your element is experiencing minus one. And as long as that's positive, you're good. If it's not, you got to redesign the thing. And in a lot of cases, um, we use our allowable is our shear allowable and our factor safety is is three I see that's commonly used in the industry three is a good number to use but our margin of safety here is 18.4 which is phenomenal as long as it's greater than zero you're good um, so that factor safety is built in because we as engineers don't uh, we can't uh, the materials are not ideal so we have to kind of cover our necks with a margin of safety and so that's it guys that's how you solve approach a combined shear and torsion problem and this is the list of steps that we went through I advise that you pause the video and kind of connect the dots if you can connect the dots to what I did through this example man you're, you're gonna be a stud in structural engineering it's just you know everybody does the FEA and that's great but at the end of the day you can quickly design using free body diagrams and understanding the different load cases uh, that you will encounter in structural engineering so guys that's a wrap I hope you enjoyed the video uh, I'll see you next time adios